Hey, what is up? My name is Rubidium. Today we're trying to answer the question, is Kino Flow still king? If you've been on a film set or you're shooting regularly in the last 10 years, you almost certainly came across this light, um, the Kino Flow 4x4. It was the first one on sale quite some time ago and very quickly became the standard of cool, large, soft light. Um, film studios and television stations and uh, newspapers bought hundreds and hundreds of these things because at first you could switch the bulbs on and off to get your exposure, then you could eventually dim them. Um, they were light, they were cheap uh, compared to the other alternatives which were buying an expensive tungsten or HMI um, and having it far from talent and then shooting it through some kind of diffusion that had to be gripped and uh, secured and all those things. With Kinoflow, you could get the, the light right up close to the talent, um, get a beautiful soft source that didn't interrupt, um, that wasn't hot or dangerous, didn't make them sweat. Um, you could take the bulbs out and do all kinds of cool things with them. And like I said, it very quickly became an industry standard. LED revolution happened uh, maybe four or five years ago, kind of parallel with the um, DSLR revolution with cameras where you had a whole new technology of lighting that suddenly, that came out um, almost by accident at first, it was kind of nasty and green and, and expensive and then got cheaper and cheaper and cheaper to the point where now um, very few people use these fluorescent tubes anymore just because uh, LED is kind of ubiquitous, it has so many more advantages. Um, LED is cheaper, it's uh, less brittle. You can't break an LED in the same way that you could break uh, fluorescent tubes. LEDs are often either daylight to tungsten dimmable um, or RGB dimmable. And you know to do this with old 4x4 Kino flows, you had to carry two sets of bulbs, you had to take out the daylight and put in the tungsten. Kinoflow have not been sitting idly by uh, while the LED revolution took place. Um, they've been developing their own LEDs. They, they came up with a whole range of lights that uh, use a similar form factor um, to their old fluorescent lights, but now work with LED. So there's been a lot of kind of shuffling and renaming of the Kinoflow uh, kind of lines, but um, right now they have uh, the Diva light, which is the entry um, LED panel, which comes assembled and it stays assembled. Then they have the Celeb, which is the slightly brighter, slightly bigger and heavier upper end sort of um, studio lighting. And then they have this guy, the, the Freestyle, um, which is so cold because it has the LED panel on the front, um, which is uh, RGB, and then uh, has the ballast and the controller, which is DMX enabled, but it's able to detach from the um, the base itself and you can you can uh, unplug the cable they give you a, a longer second cable so uh, if this unit itself is too heavy you can put it up in the ceiling or up on a stand run the ballast somewhere else so you can get to it if you're not using DMX um, and then you can also put on egg crate or the louvers um, to stop spill falling on the floor and the ceiling you know, this is Kinoflow's kind of default filmmaker solution right now. But is it enough uh, to kind of um, usurp the new kind of king of the soft light, which is the Ari Sky panel? The C60 came out a couple of years ago and very quickly became a default LED light source. Um, they also released the 180 and the 360. Uh, super bright, um, RGB, had all these great effects built into them like police cars and you know how often you use that, I'm not really sure, but it was cool for gaffers that didn't have to carry around trucks full of gels, they could just dial in the gel that they wanted. I mean, this, uh, the freestyle range is sort of, you know, Kino's answer to the sky panel. And it has a lot of advantages over the sky panel. It's much, much lighter than a sky panel. It's around the same brightness as a sky panel. And yes, with the new firmware upgrade in the freestyle, um, you now have police car, paparazzi, um, a whole bunch of interesting cool effects that will continue to be upgraded as uh, Kinoflow upgrades the, the firmware of the, of the ballast and controllers. This is the 20, the Freestyle 20. Uh, I also have a Freestyle 30, uh, which is the three foot light. 
I think there's a three Freestar 40 or 41 um, that's the four foot light. So the question is, is Kinoflu still king? Is this still um, the, the best light out there? Well, it really depends on what you mean by best. Um, it's not, it's not the lightest light, uh, even with the even with the um, the ballast off, and then you have just just the bare light itself. Um, it's pretty light. Uh, it's enough to hold, you know, very easily with one hand. It's enough to um, put up up above your talent on a C stand arm without having to worry about it fall down. So I think they succeeded in that sense. It's not the lightest light though. There are plenty of um, like the Intellitech uh, LC120 or the Falcon Eyes um, lights that like roll up that um, you can you can sticky tape them, you can gaffer tape them to the ceiling. You would not want to gaffer tape this to the ceiling unless um, you're going to use a whole roll of gaffer tape. So it's light, but not the lightest. It is very bright, uh, you know, I'd say that, you know, judging by the size of the, um, the controller, the ballast, um, this thing puts out a great deal of light. Even in the RGB version, the um, pure red or pure blue is still almost too bright to look at. It's bright, but it's not as bright as the sky panel. The sky panel is huge. Uh, it takes two people to lift. Um, it has its own fan in it. Um, it is a super bright light. I think it's um, around 18,000 lux. It's actually not as bright as my um, very cool Lupo uh, super panels. You know, one thing that, uh, one thing that the freestyles really uh, come into their own is the accessories available for them. Because Kino is a industry leader, almost everyone that makes accessories makes them for this light or this range of lights. So you have, you know, DOP choice snap bags, you have um, Chimera uh, soft boxes, you have um, all kinds of cool grids and crates and, and things you can fit with them. Um, Matthews even makes a thing called the Kino Stacker, where if you want to do a whole wall, you can put four of these things on top of one another um, to create like a whole wall of light, which is cool. They've also upgraded, well, since my last Kino, upgraded the little lollipop stand. It has this um, handle on the back. It has like a butterfly attachment. And you're able to like manipulate this to, you know, almost 360 degrees in order to get the light where you want it. Cost-wise, these are comparative to what the um, two by four banks used to be. So the the unit itself, um, so the light itself is about twelve hundred dollars. The ballast is like six or seven hundred dollars, and when you get the whole kit, it ends up being around three grand. To sum up, I would say that uh, this light is a really great all-rounder for solo shooters or small production companies that have a great deal of different things that they do. Um, it's really hard to beat Kino. Yes, it's not the cheapest, but it is cheap for what it does. It's not the lightest, um, but it is pretty light uh, for the power it has. Uh, it's not the highest output, but for those other two things, price and uh, and weight, it is really high output. Probably a combination of those three, the, the best one there. Plus it has heaps of accessories. Uh, its manufacturing is like here in the States. It's actually just up the road here in Burbank. You can you know visit the KinoFlow factory and watch um, Californians like wiring everything together. Um, their product support is awesome. Their R&D is awesome. Their lineage in the film industry is something that pretty much only Ari uh, has as well. So I feel like um, if you're gonna go out there and um, start investing money in a light kit that you're gonna have for five or 10 years, um, it's a pretty good place to start. You know, it's not the kind of thing that if you're just starting out, you've just bought your camera, you wanna go drop $5,000 on lights. If you're gonna be using um, your lights day in, day out, putting them on and off trucks, flying with them, you know, getting them beat around and um, you really need something that's solidly constructed that's not gonna fail on you, um, I would go with Kino Flow. I think Kino is, when you take into all the factors collectively, I think Kino is still king. That's my look at and review of the um, Kinoflow Freestyle line. Um, thanks very much for watching. I will see you next time.